All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about number two from the 2021 Calc BC exam, and it's like a parametric type problem. Um, so for time t greater than or equal to zero, a particle moves in the xy plane with position, x of t, y of t, and velocity vector. So this is pretty much what they always give you. Um, it's annoying though, it's the quantity t minus one, e to the t squared, comma, sine of t to the 1.25. So the first thing I would do is I would store that on my calculator. I like to store the derivative of x, so x prime as dx of t, and I like to store uh, y prime as dy of t. So that was that was the first move that I made. Um, at time t equals zero, the position of the particle is negative two, five. Find the speed um, at t equals 1.2 and the acceleration at t equals 1.2. All right, so speed is, uh, the magnitude of the velocity. So for speed, we're gonna do the square root of, and then the velocity vector is x prime of t, uh, y prime of t. So we're doing x prime of 1.2 squared plus y prime of 1.2 squared. So this purely calculator, right? So I get approximately uh, 1.271. I'll show a screenshot at the end. And if you're not sure how to do it, I have a lot of videos where I'm like actually doing these sorts of problems on the calculator. Um, acceleration is going to be uh, the double primes, right? So it's a vector with x double prime of t and y double prime of t, and we're plugging in 1.2. So we get this. It's approximately, according to the calculator, uh, 6.247 comma 0 0.405. It's actually a really nice parametric problem. Um, so here's uh, what I did. I stored them. Uh, I did the norm of the vector, or you might want to type it in as the square root of the, you know, some of the squares up to you. And then I just took the derivative of the velocity vector at 1.2, got my answers. Let's take a look at the next part. Find the total distance traveled by the particle on the time interval from 0 to 1.2. All right, so that's going to be the integral of the speed from uh, 0 to 1.2. So that's the integral of the magnitude of the velocity vector. So this time we don't plug in the 1.2. I, th I think maybe they're trying to trip you up on that. I don't know. We just let the calculator do the work. I get approximately um, 1.010. Um, I hate that kind of rounding, but that's what it rounds to. Notice the little warning. So I was like, what, is, what does the warning say? So I click it, warning questionable accuracy. That's definitely something you want to see in the middle of the AP exam. I've never seen it be wrong when it gives that warning. And there's, no, there's nothing else I could do. I mean, this is how the calculator does it. Um, but still, a little disconcerting. Um, let's take a look at part C. So find the coordinates of the point at which the particle is farthest to the left for t greater than or equal to zero. It doesn't really say you have to explain that. I'm going to explain, um, even though it does not say that you need to. So I might be over answering here. Um, if dx dt is equal to zero, you can use your calculator, but you can also just see that that's going to be when t is equal to one. Um, this is a calculator question. So uh, you could graph dx. You have to graph it as a function of x. And just look at it and you can see uh, that the sign is changing from negative to positive. So this is, I'm not sure you need this. I proved that it was a relative minimum, absolute minimum. So I'm gonna kind of go through what I said. Dx dt changes negative to positive at t equals one. That we definitely know means that x of t has a relative minimum there. Since there's only one critical point, and at that point there's a relative minimum, it must be the absolute minimum. So since there's only critical point, x of t has absolute minimum there. Um, and then uh, the absolute minimum is the farthest to the left. So I feel like there's a lot that you kind of need to say if you're really going to explain this. But then we need to find the actual point. So this is just going to involve rewriting the fundamental theorem. We're going to do it for x and for y. So x of 1 should be x of 0, which is our starting amount, plus the integral from 0 to 1 of x prime of t dt. Calculator problem. So just punched in. So x of one is approximately negative uh, 2.604. Then repeat the process for y. So y of one is going to be the starting amount, which is y of zero. Um, by the way, the starting values are negative two five. That's given in the problem at the top, right? At t equals zero, the position of the particle is negative two for x, five for y. So x zero, x of zero is negative two and y of zero is five. Those are the values that I'm using. Um, and then my calculator told me that y of 1 was approximately uh, 5.410. So then we also need to say why there is no point at which the particle is farthest to the right for t greater than or equal to 0. So I'm going to do that on another page. Um, maybe. I don't know what else is on here. 
Oh, there we go. I, I, I forgot to write down the point. The point at t equals one, the position is uh, negative 2.604 and 5.410. Always answer the question, people. All right. Find the coordinates of the point at which the particle is farthest. Oh, yeah, sorry, we did that. Explain why there is no point at which the particle is farthest to the right. Well, we already know that dx dt is greater than zero when t is greater than one. And if uh, dx dt is greater than zero, the particle is always moving to the right when t is greater than one. And if you're always moving to the right, there is no farthest right point. You will just keep going forever. All right, that was it. That was like a really nice, uh, I guess, uh, parametric equation problem. A lot of calculator stuff. Hope you found this helpful and good luck.